I'm Ian Kane. I'm the co-founder and executive chairman of Cubic Labs. And Cubic Labs is a startup incubator and innovation hub that's focused on developing a thriving ecosystem of uh, GovTech, CivTech, and financial technology companies. We're really trying to set the tone for entrepreneurship and innovation just south of Boston, located in Quincy. Hi, Ian. Hi, Jody. How are you? Good. All right. So this is like the fun thing where Ian and I are connected, but we're not connected. So this is the second time we've ever connected, but my mother and your mother-in-law are like literally like my mom used to work with your mother-in-law and they were like, like in their young days. I mean, I was little. And so they have had this love fest for each other for years. I mean, literally like every single one of the best kids, like my mom held, I mean, she was <laughs> her babies. And, and so of course years, years later, they're just like still connecting. They still love each other. And then she, Beth connected you and I together. I don't think it could be any better of a referral than from your mother-in-law. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It's totally, totally true. And like, whenever I even say the word Beth, my mom's like, oh, my Bethy. I love my Beth. Well, Beth is an absolute sweetheart and she's a delight. And as you know, she just celebrated her birthday and of course received a birthday card from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I love these like long, long, long like, relationships. And then of course, like I'm on Facebook and I'm like, Beth, I love you. And she's like, I love you back. <laughs> It's a very small world. <laughs> it really is. All right, so let's rewind the clocks. So who are you? Like, who are you? Where did you come from? How, I mean, like, I want to know what led you to where you are now, but, like, how did it get here? Like, I mean, like. Yeah, what? sure. Um, well, at my heart, I'm a Quincy guy. Um, I grew up in Quincy, Mass, and, you know, went to the public schools, uh, ended up at Boston College. Um, I didn't go too far. I lived in Cambridge for a number of years while I worked uh, for an energy focused private equity fund that was based in Waltham, but we owned power plants uh, in the Middle East, North Africa and East Asia. Uh, went to grad school in North Carolina at Duke. And then I ended up coming back to Boston after because uh, I needed to figure out what to do next. And um, what I ended up doing was finding a um, actually the first sales role with a with a startup company in Cambridge called Luminoso. And we were developing natural language processing software and selling it to market research firms and uh, companies with large qualitative data. And that was, that was one of the first real instances of uh, sort of startup culture that I got working in a, in a company, being the first business hire, helping the team build out a sales and marketing team, helping, helping the team with, with a series A round. And um, from there, I took a, a couple of different pivots, uh, one, including uh, running for public office in Quincy, uh, because as I say, I suffer from a lifelong political affliction that I had to uh, actualize. And so I, I, I ran for a seat that was open on the city council in 2015 and I won. So I've served on the city council since 2016 mm -hmm. and um, worked at a business valuation firm building out uh, the private equity practice uh, there. And then uh, the next step was actually where there was a significant pivot. Um, I got a phone call from a friend who had recommended me to her brother-in-law to join a company. And uh, there was uh, and the idea to build out a couple of different divisions to what it was a, a cable services business. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to this company very excited, uh, looking to make some entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial uh, changes within the organization. And it was a very bad move. Um, it wasn't what it crack was cracked up to be. And so I ended up there after six months and I said, you know what, I'm never going to be in a situation like that again. I, I don't want to uh, work for a person that's going to lie to me and you know, kind of give me, give me these hopes. I'm going to create my own path from here. And um, thank goodness, you know, I was in a good position. I had, you know, my spouse, uh, Larry, who was supportive of, of me and, and my endeavors, all crazy and, and otherwise. So I, I started a consulting practice that broadly focused on um, public, private, and nonprofit sectors, helping with strategic advisory and capital expertise, and sort of just trying to fit in within the uh, industries that I've played and the experiences both in the public and private sector just to help different organizations and uh, institutions. And that one thing led to another where I, you know, you meet people along the way, as you very well know, and um, somewhere along the way I met a, um, a friend who, and we started talking about spreading the entrepreneurship and innovation ecosystem a little bit south of Boston. Um, you know, we're based in Quincy and there's plenty of activity going on in, in Boston. Seaport was just built out in its entirety. There's a lot of stuff going on down there. Cambridge and Somerville, um, you know, are very saturated with, with startup activity. And we wanted something for ourselves and not to have to get on uh, 93 and take that extra half hour jaunt, which should be a six minute ride uh, to get into the space where things are happening. So 
we started to put together a model for Cubic Labs, and um, we met some uh, some great folks that were willing to support us by way of uh, real estate. And so we've got 13,000 square feet of office space in downtown Quincy, directly across the street from the Quincy Center T Station. And um, we've been, I guess we've been putting this together for now the past year, but uh, we, over the past couple of months, even during uh, the pandemic, we have been able to sign uh, four companies and, you know, we're ready to welcome them in. We just uh, added a couple of board members to our board. So we you know, now have a board, mem uh, a board of directors of three folks. And uh, we just received a, um, an unsolicited contribution from a venture capital firm in uh, Boston. And that's going to seed our would-be first 150K challenge that we're planning to launch in the fall. Right, so you went and just did an entire montage of information. <laughs> like, I'm gonna bring you all the way back because I wanna know a little bit more. So absolutely. let's just start at, let's just start at the, that point of corporate versus going to startup. Um, what was that moment of, what was that, that moment where you're like, yeah, I'm never gonna let this happen to me ever again. And what kind of advice would you give to people that I wanna be in that startup culture I don't know what to look for. All I know is I'm done with corporate and this is very intriguing to me. So yeah. what, you, what was that writing on the wall for you? And what's the advice that people should be aware of when thinking about this? And I say this because right now, because of the pandemic, so many people are looking to either start their own business or they're looking to go into a startup business. And they've been thinking about it for quite some time. And being home right now for three months is that I'm, this has been my push. I love right. the but I love that whole entire essence of just like the innovation. So what would you say, what did you see? Yeah, well, there were two points, right? There was first graduating from business school. And so if anybody's done an MBA program, um, you know, they, they cater uh, the MBA students to go into corporate jobs. So either you're going into marketing and CPG or you're going to consulting and everybody's kind of herded around these things. And that was something that I didn't understand coming from where I did because I'd had a very, unique professional experience that was um, much more like a, a life than it was just a job. And so I couldn't imagine just going and taking another role with a title. Um, so, you know, it was very difficult trying to figure out something unique that was, you know, would stand out and provide you with such uh, a unique life experience in a, in a professional role. And I was able to find that after business school, but it takes a lot of independence. It took mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I would sit at MIT in uh, the team rooms at Sloan and just pound the phones and uh, look all over the place. I actually found that role on Craigslist. So you have to look in places that you normally uh, wouldn't, you know, look for jobs because, I mean, that company, which was very unique, uh, they were putting jobs on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to network, network, network. It's, uh, you know, so that's, that's not sort of one finding a job. But for folks who are interested in actually doing their own startup, um, it takes a lot of self-confidence, right? And if you have a concept that you think would be a viable business, start socializing the concept to people that you know and trust. Um, or find people that are in similar spaces to the concept that you're trying to develop. Uh, people are very willing to uh, lend you their time uh, if you have, you know, an interesting idea that they, you know, you'd want to bounce off. So, you know, sort of like advisory, advisory people. Um, so I, I wouldn't, it, it takes a lot of self-confidence. It takes a willingness to be able to reach out to folks. Um, but it, it's trusting yourself. I mean, you know, we're trying to give people a space where uh, they can actualize on their ideas. Um, and I think that it's just taking that initial leap of saying, okay, I think this is something that I can do. And then figuring out the steps that you need to take to get there. Yeah, you were saying how I was, you were disheartened by the individuals that would lie to you. I mean, so how does one even know? I mean, I mean, like, did you, it wasn't blatant, I'm assuming. So how is it where if someone's like looking to start a business or, I mean, and for some small businesses, it's not that they want to lie. They just don't want people to know that they can't solve their own problems. So they're kind of avoiding the truth. Yeah. I mean, there's probably a lot of different factors. And I think in the circumstance that I was in, um, you know, I was, I was led to believe that someone was interested in taking their, their company to, uh, a different place and that they were going to give me uh, the tools and the resources that I needed to do so. And when in fact that was not the case, um, you know, the, 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 this company in particular was, um, it was in, uh, privately owned and then it had converted uh, to uh, an employee owned company. 
and but the employee owned uh, status really was you know the reins were never really given to the employees and so there were family members that kind of operated in corners of the business that protected particular interests but uh, really didn't do what they needed to do to help the company grow either um, so it was, it was much more of a it was like a cult of personality business which you probably heard much about um, I, I feel like there was like a lot of there was a lot going on there yeah, there was a ton going on in there. And, um, and I had some of the facts, I didn't have all the facts. And, you know, some of that's on me too, right? Realizing that um, I could have done deeper diligence, but I think I was excited by the opportunity to uh, transform a business that I, I let that, you know, run wild. So, um, you know, I, it, it's important that when you're going into uh, either a job or you're going into a position that, uh, you know, you think is right, that you, you get all the answers that you can and you shouldn't be uh, shy to ask those serious and deep questions to get mm -hmm. to the place where you need to be that it's it's not only comfortable but it's the right fit. I, I mean I feel that that's that that's something that both someone that's going to start a business as well as someone that's going to go into a business would definitely it, it, I mean, doing your due diligence and asking those questions is extremely important. So now you've had these experiences and now you decide to create your own. Um, yeah. So and and at home like I mean you're homegrown Quincy like this is like I mean. I mean, it's not that hard to, like, in essence, it's not that hard to hop on the red line train to get to Boston. Um, yes, it is. Before, it was that whole entire Silicon Valley versus Boston. And more and more people were staying in Boston because all the universities and colleges are here. And a lot of these companies on, in Silicon Valley were complaining where I'm finding someone in the, uh, from the best schools. I'm training them. I'm giving them all the resources. And then my competitor plucks them away. And I'm like, oh, God, I have to start from scratch. Okay. And more people started coming here. It was Mark Zuckerberg that came back at Harvard, he's like, if I was going to grow Facebook again, I'd stay here because the brain drain when you're on the West Coast is hard. So mm -hmm. now, it is true where more people don't want to come to the city. I mean, I live on, on the North Shore. I go in the city when I absolutely have to, but it's not even the city. I go to Cambridge, where a lot of the, um, a lot of the entrepreneurs that I work with in small businesses are. So why Quincy? Why, did it, why was it time for Quincy? Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, one, it's my home. And you said, you know, in essence, it's easy. It, it is easy to get on the red line and come to Quincy or to go from Quincy to Boston. Um, we literally, where our offices were directly across the street from Quincy Center T Station, it takes you 20 minutes to get to South Station, not even. Um, so, um, you know, I, given my involvement uh, in, the, in the city council and uh, living here my whole life, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of things going on in Quincy, including a downtown revitalization. So um, there are a considerable number of real estate projects that have taken place uh, over the past few years, uh, mostly residential projects. Um, but, uh, you know, from our, my perspective, it, it's time to figure out how to grow some commercial activity here as well. Um, and there are, there is activity here. There, there are large businesses here in different corners of the, you know, office parks. We've got you know, a huge uh, telecom business, Granite Telecom. We've got Jay Jill on the other side of the city. Um, you know, we've got a huge state street complex here. Uh, but we really wanted to see what we can create from the ground up. And we know that there's a constituency of folks that are coming from areas south of Boston. So that could be anywhere, you know, down Route 3 to the South Shore or anywhere down 95 to, you know, Fall River, New Bedford area um, that we just believe aren't served, you know, because you have to go to Cambridge where that activity is. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we really and, and from what we've learned so far and the folks that we've been able to attract is that there are people local that want this type of community. And the other thing that we found is that uh, there is a certain level of, um, I guess, experience that our entrepreneurs so far, uh, you know, they've had varying ranges between a decade and in some cases, 50 years of professional experiences and people just want a local place that they can work out of uh, that's going to be a place that they can get things done. Uh, one of the things that you, I mean, you were mentioning um, at the beginning, a lot of different um, areas of expertise that you're focusing on the most. Can you go over each one of them and why did you select those? Because most accelerators feel like they're just adding, they, they, it's a hodgepodge of just all the different industries. Sure. Why are you focusing on the ones that you are? How did you select them? And are you seeing a large traction of people coming to you for that specifically? So we originally started uh, talking about blockchain specifically, and um, actually that was going to be the only thing. And then I said, you know what, I had started to develop a thesis around um, government and, and civic technologies, and basically that, you know, government is one of the last places, and, and federal level is a different story, but municipal and state governments are some of the last places that 
um, have really innovated through the application of technologies and other types of tech enabled services. And so um, I think that there's a unique opportunity to uh, build sort of a, you know, uh, I don't know, a total system solutions or a platform of, of businesses that would support local government and local and state government in order to improve constituent services uh, and, you know, hopefully to improve operations in order to save money at the end of the day. Um, so we brought those two other sectors in and, you know, government and, and civic tech are pretty nascent on their own right. Um, you know, there's probably one dedicated venture capital fund that I'm aware of that focuses on gov tech. And then there have been a handful of very successful um, uh, startups that have either, you know, been acquired uh, multiple times and or have had multiple fundraising rounds. Uh, there are great publications like uh, Govern GovTech that puts out a Tech 100 uh, list of, you know, the most uh, successful tech businesses uh, that are focused on government. Um, so, you know, long story short, we started with blockchain, didn't think that was broad enough. I added these two sectors that were very personal to me. And then uh, sort of, I didn't think blockchain was, was going to be broad enough. And so we decided to just expand it to, to fintech. And what these three sectors uh, really represent is where our personal interests and our professional experiences have come from. Where are you finding these individuals? Because again, I mean, you, one would assume that a lot of the financials are in Boston. I mean, there's, I mean, like, in Quincy, I know there's like, I mean, a lot of banks that are, that are right there and they're like behemoths that's, that are there. But where are you finding these individuals that want to go into GovTech? Um, and is it homegrown like yourself? Where it's like, I mean, this is like where I'm from here. This is like, I, I, I want to give back to my community, um, but I don't want to do it the, the traditional way. Or are these individuals that are coming in from the colleges and are realizing, I don't want to go into state government, but I want to be part of that world. Yeah. So the, um, I guess the, you know, the one thing that has been a learning experience for me is that when we start to talk about having a, a, an incubator in Quincy, um, people say, do you think you're going to get enough interest? And I always immediately say, listen, this is a global effort. We're just headquartered in Quincy. We're, we're just trying to bridge the energy. You know, don't, don't demean what we're trying to do. We're trying to do what the mass challenges and what any you know, of the other green tech labs and any of the other incubators or accelerators have done. We're just doing it from a different location. Um, so most of the people that we have found have been through networking so far. And you know, we are, actually, we started talking about this as a concept last May. So you know, we're about one year from concept to execution. And so, and that has just been pounding the pavement. So at the same time, we've been trying to find um, sponsors and supporters uh, to, to keep us moving. We've been building a network of advisors and uh, we've been just courting entrepreneurs. And so uh, we do have folks who, uh, who have found us, who are local, who a couple of the companies that are joining us, I couldn't be more thrilled to have them because they have exactly the energy and the enthusiasm that we're trying to uh, really uh, stimulate here and they're going to set the tone for us uh, going forward and so um, now we're doing the best that we can to to get the word out so that people can see us and um, you know sometimes that's um, that's more more difficult than than we wish it were but uh, you know we're trying to make news happen so you know uh, things like this and, and you know so nice to be here with you but this is this is just another avenue for us to get get the word out about who we are and to have folks contact us all right, so I, I love that you just kind of sort of put me in my place as well about like the location because it's fun because Mass Challenge, Techstars, Y Combinator, all of those are in the Cambridge, Boston area. And when people are coming in from other countries or other states to get into, because they got into these programs, they're usually staying in Quincy or just Dorchester or, or like, I mean, like even further because they can't find anything in Cambridge or in Boston. So of course my brain just automatically like I go, are you getting the be like, I know better. I know better. And even my brain went there, they're like, would people want to go to Quincy? Of course they would. This is like so silly. Well, so that, that's like, what we're competing with. I mean, but that's what we're competing with. Even, you know, I read the news every day and um, you know, I'm reading the Boston Business Journal and I'm reading Boston O and um, actually most recently IntelliCare, which is a um, it's a healthcare business that's that's located in Quincy, and they just had a, a very large funding round, they're doing really well. Um, but we don't get the news that we want, right? Like we want eyes down here. It's, you know, it's, it's our turn. Like it's time for us to be included. We are greater Boston. We are right next door to Boston, you know, like, so. Well, the, the fun part about this is the pandemic will yeah. help that because everyone for the rest of the year is working from home. Right. It doesn't really matter where you are. So right. Let's talk about that. What has the pandemic done for you? I mean, in regards of your growth, 
the visibility, the networking. I mean, has it helped? Has it hurt? Um, so, you know, it's been a, it's been a challenging time for everyone, I think, but, um, this time was very, has been very productive for me, I must say. Um, for Cubic specifically, obviously it's a very difficult uh, thing to go into a co-working environment business during a pandemic. We were just about to welcome our first uh, businesses into the space and we were kind of, you know, like, is this, is this happening? Is this not happening? And obviously it didn't happen. Um, so things slowed down for Cubic a bit. Um, but personally, I'm working on an, an, a, a couple of other projects, uh, ancillary, that um, I was able to, to really focus on. And what John, John O'Keefe, my co-founder, and I, what we really did was we, uh, we stepped back. We just wanted to see what was going to play out because there was nothing kind of, thank goodness, you know, we have such strong supporters that, you know, we, we still had our, our real estate. We still have our sponsors. So we, you know, we were still in the game. Um, so we, we kind of stepped back and just were watching what other people were doing and that's, you know, any type of business. And, and it seemed like many people were jumping and trying to, uh, pivot on their own because, uh, their business models might not have survived this time, um, you know, for whatever reason. And so, um, that allowed us to really just take a sort of self-assessment about what we were doing and, and where we were going. And we kept in touch with the groups that, you know, we're still planning to join us. And actually, even just during this time, we added the board members that I mentioned earlier, yeah. um, and we received uh, contributions still. So uh, it was a good time for us. And, and we're excited just to uh, sort of figure out more unique ways to engage with folks. Um, because if people aren't going to be uh, immediately in places where there are events that we were hoping to have at Cubic, then we we're, you know, we're still figuring out how we can um, really differentiate ourselves and our offering, uh, you know, or, or just be complementary to the ecosystem, uh, which is what we're, you know, our goal is anyway. So what are you thinking about in regards to, you just said it, um, people aren't going to be, people are not going to rush to go into a setting with a large group of people, or I mean, even like, I mean, even 25 to 30 people, people are going to be very hesitant about that. Um, co, um, co-working spaces, open spaces have become the norm um, for a lot of people, a lot of corporate organizations, like they got rid of the walls and they have that open space. And now they're like, wow, we just spent a lot of money doing that. And now we're going to have to put back the walls because people are going to be afraid to go that way. Or we just get rid of our brick and mortars altogether and your space becomes viable. So I mean, what have you thought about the pros and cons of that, where that space is going to be a yay for people that are working from home that just need a little bit of something different? And then the, the nay for the people are like, I don't want to be in the same room with a lot of people. Yes, I want to network, but I'm not shaking hands. I could do the elbow, but if I, someone comes too close to me, I might, the anxiety goes flying yeah, up. Sure. Um, I think we're in a fortunate position because we're just starting, right? We're just about, like, we were just about to open up. And so, I mean, even how this thing has come together, we, you know, we're a nonprofit. So we're trying to raise money and we're working with organizations that, uh, are giving us furniture that, you know, uh, there's two groups that we've been working with, the Furniture Trust and Restream. And these are groups that get involved in corporate waste streams. And basically they offer nonprofits free or low cost furniture and you pay for the moving. And, and that's been unbelievable because we've got some great furniture to fill our space. Um, and we can still reconfigure uh, based on people's level of comfortability. And with our 13,000 square feet of, of space that we have, um, we're on two floors and we have uh, multiple rooms. And so if, um, you know, you're a solo entrepreneur, if you're a solopreneur uh, or a team of a couple of people, we can, you know, right now configure it that people can have their own areas uh, or even teams up to probably upwards of 10 folks we still have space for. Um, so, you know, we're not, uh, you know, it's, it's almost thank goodness we didn't have it all programmed out yet that we can be very flexible with the needs of the groups who are going to join us. In a perfect world, perfect world. <laughs> Tomorrow, the doors open up. It's our new normal. We have no idea what the new normal is, but the new normal is first day. What does it look like for you? Um, so, you know, I've already, I've been down at, at Cubic every, every week or so just to kind of, you know, keep the, keep the heart in the space. Um, but what does it look like? Um, you know, we, we do have a couple of, of, of groups that are ready to join us. And so as soon as, um, you know, sort of this okay uh, from the state comes through, we're ready to get back there. We're ready to start, you know, setting, get, getting that energy flowing in the space. Um, so, you know, day, day one for us looks like it would have back in March, which is when we were welcoming folks back in. <laughs>
Have you learned any, I mean, a lot of, I mean, look, we've had, we have time. We have uh, the abundance of time and we're going to continue to have the abundance of time. The only difference is it's summertime, but we still have the abundance, yeah. abundance of time. We're not going anywhere um, comfortably anytime soon. Um, what skill, I mean, like for you, for Larry, um, what skill sets have you learned? Um, you're home all the time. Are you adding things to your life? Are you realizing, wow, I never paid attention to the fact that I did this before. Um, things that you've really witnessed that you're at, you're thinking about adding to the company. What skill sets that, that you acquired while you've been on your, um, I feel like it's the blessing time. I, I call it the blessing time. Yeah. Um, well, one, we realized, Larry and I both realized um, we've appreciated this time because we've had so much time together. And mm -hmm. we, you know, we realized. Did you marry uh, well? Uh, did, did I marry well? Yeah, <laughs> I married well. Yeah, Good. I mean, I think for some, this was like a make or break, I think, for a lot of people. And we, you know, we don't have children, but I, I think people are learning <laughs> Um, you know, their, their level of, of tolerance with, <laughs> with their families during this time. So we, we said, you know, we're so fortunate. We love each other. And we, I mean, we, really, we've been having a ball. We, um, and we had just bought a house in November. So we, you know, had a comfortable space and we're in a good neighborhood. So people, you know, there's always activity on the street and kids yeah. and stuff. Um, so, you know, what did we do? We spent, we caught up, you know, we weren't running around. We've been, everyone lives busy lives. Like you're going from event to event or mm -hmm. from meeting to meeting. And, um, you know, it really just allowed for some time for, for personal introspection and, and catching up as a family. And, um, I, you know, I play the piano. I, I got to play the piano more than I have in a while and, you know, get exercise and, and food and health back on track. Um, and, you know, even as I said, uh, there are a couple other projects that, that I've been working on. And so I was able to, to focus on, on them as well uh, and to get a little bit organized. <laughs> We've got a dog coming next week, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. You found a dog? There's no dogs anywhere. What do yep, you mean we, you found a dog? You have yeah, a dog. We, we found, yeah, we're getting a puppy. Uh, we, we had tried going down the, the shelter route. And uh, no one got back to us apparently because they're just so busy mm -hmm. uh, with with requests. So we found a uh, a kennel in Rainham, and uh, we've got a uh, yellow lab uh, that we're going to pick up next Saturday. <laughs> you, oh, like literally, like my friends that have a golden retriever that I basically raised. So I like they traveled so much, so I kind of had Wrigley all the time. And literally, everyone's like, "Your dog is the best." I'm like, "He's not my dog," but everyone's like, "But he's always with you." I'm like, "I know, huh? it's kind of weird." But he's now moving. So they are now, they are retired and they left Marblehead and they're going to Florida half the time to Snowbirds, Florida and Nantucket. And I'm like, everyone's like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing oh, well. Oh no. <laughs> no. I'm so jealous that you're getting the dog because I well, get the dog in my apartment. <laughs> please come meet her and uh, you can take care of her whatever you'd like. <laughs> Dude, don't, I mean, don't put, you do not say that. You, I, I am. I am. That's fine. We'd love it. The seed. I love it. I'm like, I'm a I'm <laughs> babysitter. I'm a dog whisperer. I'm a baby whisperer. I'm a dog whisperer. Just so you know. Those are very good traits to have. <laughs> Dogs and babies know. They just know good people. Oh. All right. So my last question, if you had an ask, um, a personal ask and a professional ask, what would be your personal and professional ask to anyone and everyone that is watching you right this very moment? Um, so I guess around Cubic and professionally, um, you know, we're, we're building an ecosystem here from just a different part of, you know, different sort of juxtaposition to the city, to Boston. And so we're looking people to, to we're looking for people to support that mission. Um, you know, we've been so fortunate to, uh, attract, uh, Fox Rock properties and South Shore Bank and Foley and Lardner who, you know, our ground, ground troops who have really gotten us going, uh, Castle Island Ventures, which is, um, venture capital fund in town is just recently, as I said, seated. So, you know, professionally, if there are organizations out there that are, that are looking to get involved with um, a new forward focused uh, startup venture that's going to be focusing on the sectors that we're playing in fintech, govtech, and civtech, uh, please, you know, give us, give us a shout. Um, we'd love to talk and see how we can enable your business um, to look more uh, unique and sort of position itself with, with us in line. Um, personally, um, God, that's a, that's a really, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like they're almost the same thing um, because it's, that's, that's what I'm focused on right now. Um, personally, you know what? I just, uh, through the city, I just commissioned a writing competition for students and we, we just uh, put that YouTube up 
Uh, you can either see it on my LinkedIn or you can find it on YouTube through Quincy Access Television. Uh, but we chose nine winners out of uh, 821 submissions that came through through three grade, you know, elementary, middle, wow. and, and high school. And so these these stories and poems and essays were some of the most powerful pieces that um, I've read in a while. And just listening and hearing uh, these folks deliver them was a very powerful thing. So if you've got some time and you're really interested in understanding how young people have been affected during uh, this pandemic, please give that a watch. All right, that that's going to make me really happy because um, when I feel overwhelmingly sad about both pandemics that we're dealing with right now, um, the ones that I gravitate toward the kids and the kids and I'm watching them. And I mean, I'm Auntie Jody to so many and I'm watching mom and dad saying like, they're fine. They look fine. They're doing fine. I asked them and they're like, they're saying they're fine. But yet Auntie Jody has access to their Instagrams and at two o'clock in the morning, they're posting. And I'm like, why are they up at two o'clock if they're fine? Yeah. So yeah. They're, trying to, they're trying to find their way and navigate. And when you like, just like if, if your parents ask you like, Hey, okay, Ian, are you fine? And you're like, yeah, I'm fine. And then they look at you like, I go, are you really fine? Parents are asking the kids, are you fine? And that one, answer, yep, I'm fine. But they're really not fine because this is extremely overwhelming for adults let alone young kids. So if they can find ways to express themselves through words, I mean, absolutely, it's amazing. And 800 plus- 800, 821 submissions, it was beautiful. And, um, but they, I mean, they're, they're off track right now. I mean, there's, and it just, it was just such a powerful thing to be able to read all these things because you just realize that um, they are very much affected by this. There's, they have a lot of anxiety and coupled with, you know, whatever age you're at in development, um, you know, that affects you in different ways. And, and parents cope in different ways too. So it's just, um, it was, it was an honor and a pleasure to be able to understand that perspective. And, you know, I, I, I do hope and pray for them that, uh, there's, there's a good opportunity for them to get back on track with education in the fall, because, um, I think without, uh, that structure, um, we're gonna, we're gonna lose a lot of kids. I think that this was also an opportunity for those young kids to realize that there's so much more that they can do at their age. Um, they are at home, they're no longer with their friends, they're really understanding a little bit more how much they can adapt to, um, if they are adapting well. Uh, when uh, you had the option of like a pass-fail, they were like, okay, well, I'm passing, I'm not gonna sit through a Zoom call, but you saw a lot of innovation through the TikToks or through, God, they're posting photos of like them redecorating things in the house or building things. So a lot, right. I mean, I saw a lot of kids, and not just kids that I knew, but like kids that just were posting things that their creativity came out and this was like a perfect time because it was like a rewind of just I'm on T I'm watching TV or I'm just like texting my friends. They were starting to get tired of that technology. Uh, they were fatigued and they were starting to think bigger than that. So I think that even just to be able to put pen to paper and write something, yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So I love that you gave them this forum and those same kids that are writing, there's a lot of group. A lot of those kids are going to come up with those great innovative ideas and be the next no, Ab absolutely. It's those self starters that that aren't afraid to express themselves. Uh, starting a business is a personal expression. Yep. That is an absolute personal expression. So if you can put something on paper and it's in any form or format, then you're you're already there. And I love that you're doing it for a community that it's so close to the city. But guess what? The city does get a lot of resources and a lot of areas in Massachusetts. So whenever people are like it's Boston, like I go, it's Massachusetts. Like when I worked in the government, I mean, like it was like. In being Governor um, Romney's press secretary, I was able to visit every single city in town, 351, which is like, it's amazing. And I tell people, you have to, everyone is different. Yeah. We're a very diverse um, community, and you, but they're in pockets, and you have to go to different areas to see in Watertown, the Armenian com community. You're going to New Bedford, the Portuguese and Cape Verdean community. I mean, you, there's so many more than just like what you're seeing and hearing about Boston. And there's so many people that are creating, but they don't have the resources. Right. They don't have the time to go to Boston because they have a family to take care right. of. Right. And it should be noted, I forgot the Romney connection. Um, you'll appreciate that our first company and entrepreneur is Renee Fry for with Gentrio. I love Renee! <laughs> oh my God, I love Renee! <laughs> She's, she, she and her sister, Julie, are phenomenal. That's, this is what I'm talking about. Gentrio, those two ladies are absolutely setting the tone for us and they're phenomenal. Um, so Renee was my second interview for the podcast when I started. In uh, I, I actually saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Renee's good people, like really good people. I go oh, she's, every single she's... day. And, I, and yeah, I mean, like it's it's funny because the 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 group of people that I know, um, global and non-global, there's all these overlaps, and everyone's like, "How the hell?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm the link." It's kind of weird. I mean, I have a girlfriend, my girlfriend Lisa in Seattle, she was on a plane 
years ago, but she was on a plane sitting next to someone and like Lisa is just as talkative and active as I am. She was talking to a person who's like, yeah, I know someone in Boston. And then they, like, she's like, I know someone in Boston. They were going back and forth and she's like, my person's Jody Charles. My person's Jody Charles. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> on a plane, not coming to Boston. Oh, so random. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I love uh. <laughs> I'm just picturing the guess who board and flipping faces down until they both find out it's you. <laughs> this random crazy person. Oh my God, Ian, thank you so very much for taking time out of your day. I mean, oh, thank you for having me. This is like so much fun. I mean, I cannot wait to see your spot. I go, oh wait, before we go, we have a, don't we have another connection? We have Scott. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Scott. Scott. Yeah, Scott yeah, from Mass Scott Channel. Yeah, 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 Scott yeah, so, so like literally, like I go, there's so many different links of our lives. Look at that. Absolutely, <laughs> love it. it All good with... connections too, good people. I know, but it, start, it starts with Larry. It starts with Larry because Larry has the most amazing mom. I'm nothing without Larry. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the most amazing mom that loves my Beth. So yeah. So awesome. it's all about Beth right now. It's like, it's, about, <laughs> it's all about Beth. Thank you so very much. I go, Thank I really you, appreciate Joey. this. Can't wait to see your space. Can't wait to hear more and more. And I mean, and I will literally tell a lot of my people that are in the South Shore that want to be part of this entrepreneurial ecosystem that they don't want to work in the traditional ways anymore that there is a space for them. Send them to us. Love to Beautiful. see them. Thank you. Thanks, Jody.